up your head, beat up your body Get on the bus, it's time to party It's Gregory, it is a Saturday night Gregory Take your socks off and make your pants on Get in the car and drive uh, on today's episode, you'll notice it get a little chopped up. We've got two great comedians, uh, Gasser Alamante and Freddie G. Uh, did I get it? Did I get it right? Almost. Yeah. Oh, God damn it. I <laughs> fucked his name you up. You made it Italian. <laughs> Alamante, yeah. Um, but we had some technical issues, so they cut out about twice. If you notice a little gap in the, there's a little weirdness there. Also happened on the Patreon. Uh, apologize for that. We'll have that fixed by next week. Uh, hopefully. Um, but um, thank you guys for tuning in. I give you now Gaster and Freddie. Welcome, everybody. Friday night, Greg. Friday night energy on your Wednesday goddamn morning. I'm Greg Stone. Today, I got two great people whom I love. They're great comedians, but to me, that's secondary. I like great people first because I like, there's just so many fucking idiots, so many monsters in this business. There are many people I love. Uh, that to me is the most important thing. One is, and we're going to do our plugs first. That's our new thing. You plug first. Freddie G, I've, he's got great jokes. He puts all over TikTok. Uh, you guys got a great new web series called Unlikely Roomies, right? Yes, Unlikely correct. Roomies, right? Very ex- which is funny is that was like, you yeah, come on to promote. Who promotes YouTube videos on podcasts? <laughs> That's how much I love you guys. I was like, just come on for any fucking reason. Um, it took me four years to get on your podcast. No, it didn't. What do you mean? It took you four years? Yeah. Have you been trying hard? It's a very easy podcast to do. Oh, my God. Really? Yeah. yeah. I've been. Think a- I, I think I asked every year or two. <laughs> you live three quiet. houses away. <laughs> well, we did have a Freddie G band that I did not tell people about. Yeah, that was f- originally uh, there was a Freddie G band, but you've passed. Yeah, yeah. That time there was now. a band. Yeah. I had to ban you. I had yeah. to ban you. you uh, bad, baby. Second, we have Gaster, who I'm going to tell you right now to your face. Have always been afraid to say your last name. Alamont, <laughs> Almonte, Almonte, hey, Gastor Almonte, 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 so cool. Almonte. There you go. Nice. That's like an Italian guy who owns a diner. Yeah, Almonte. Bang. He owes you money. You nailed uh, it. And Gaster, whom I've known for years now, amazing storyteller. You're like it's like crazy because you guys are so ridiculously different. Word up. But I love that you're like friends. Um, yeah, it's not likely that we'd be roommates. Yeah. Here's my problem with that. Unlikely friends. There you are. At roomies, I've had so many roommates I didn't want to live with. I lived, I could, goddamn roommate was a pit bull for a while. And then I moved in with Mad Dog. Why am I shitting on your web series? That's, That's not madness. what I'm trying to do. Why would you do that? I don't, I know. How did that even go? No. I'm not even it's... mad about you shitting on the web series. Why did you make those terrible oh. decisions? <laughs> <laughs> those are all I had no things... money. I was broke. You move in whatever psychopath you could live with. You go home. You go to, like, parents. You I go to people that love you on sofas. Yeah, I wish I had someone who loved me with a sofa. I'm sorry. You, now you, I would have come to your house. Yeah, I was going to say, you never called me. <laughs> I got plenty of sofas. Dude, my first roommates, when I used to live with my wife now, she yeah. was then a girlfriend, James Mattern, Anthony DeVito, in a three bedroom, four people, three bedroom. That's why I married my wife, because she was able to handle that shit. <laughs> um, she a trooper, yo. Where do we find, so Freddie G, where's your? Orange Freddie G. Right. On Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, all of them. And you're constantly putting up jokes, doing all this like oh, cool God, stuff. So many, they're so yeah. funny. I love the you, you're like a great I don't I don't consider you a one liner guy, but you're really a joke guy. Yeah. Right? Yeah, joke you're like guy, a joke, yeah. Mr. Jokes. One liner is an insult, yeah. It's an insult. Even if jokes only have one line, it's yeah. It's it's like saying you're a niche weirdo. You think only so? like nerds are like. Yeah. One liner is a way of putting people off. Oh, not to me. I mean, like I think of you know, Eric Bergstrom's a great one liner, Mitch Hedberg, great one liner. Yeah. What the hell are you talking about? I thought it was a there's like the five. Again. There's like one one liner who gets famous every generation. And that's that's gonna be you, my G. Right. Own that shit. And there, because those other one liners are ripping off those guys. Yeah. Dimitri okay. Martin was great. Okay. Yeah, you want to Free G, feel free to fight back. I mean, this is. I mean, I'm only doing this because I want to see. And then uh, Gaster, you're just an amazing storyteller. I appreciate it, man. And uh, God, just tell you this fun story. When I met you, we had like a. We we just met. I don't know if this is weird, but we met, and they were like, "Oh, like what? You know, like I was asking for advice." Yeah, I didn't. I felt yeah, weird yeah. saying that. Nah. And I just watched your shit. I went, "Now nah, you're good, man. You're good. You're fine. Whatever that you're doing, you're already doing. <laughs> Shut up. Just get out of my face. I think you did this meeting to insult me. I think you wanted to be like, look how much better I am at stories than you. Not at all. And I went, "All right, you piece of shit. You you got a new enemy. And that's why you were banned. That's why it's been a two year ban on both of you guys. Fucking a, man. Look but I can that. never do I'm what you calling do. Calling me one liner is like if someone says, "I liked your energy up there." <laughs> that's that's like that the insult? way you guys get yeah. That's literally what everyone says to me when I get off stage. Yeah, people are like I liked your writing. 
<laughs> like, oh, that means someone else should be saying it. I feel like storyteller gets shitted on more. Like, I'm a comic, but, like, storytelling has, like, another world. Yeah. So, like, that gets, like, shitted on a lot, you know? I did that till I met you. Yeah. Then I still do it, but less. So, yeah. I, I just think I'm a bully. Like, I have bully aura, even though I'm not a bully. So, like, people don't say it to my face. But, like, it's out there. The storytelling thing... Also, if I cut you off, I'm so sorry. I got too excited to say that. But <laughs> people used to call me a storyteller, and I used to get mad because you'd see these storytellers who are like, who just were too lazy to write punchlines. Right. You know what I mean? It's like, no, but but then I'm like, but a storytelling comedian, you know, like Sean Patton, um, Jay Larson. Jay Larson. Um, yeah, I can't think of anybody else. I think a lot of people do <laughs> Most it. With people. I think Chappelle honestly ends every special one. Everyone long story. does. Yeah. yeah. Everyone, when you're doing personal shit and, um, yeah, yeah, but I get what you're saying with the. I don't know where I was going with that. Uh, I view it like thanks. like it's like a MMA versus like judo. Right. You know what I mean? Like judo is his own shit, mm -hmm. but within MMA, it's also part of it. So right. That's what storytelling is on its own is separate shit. I don't want to watch that. Right, right, right. Within right. MMA, within comedy, I fuck with it. Right. I mean, I always got came at stories because, um, one, jokes were way too hard to remember. Two, if you tell a story. Even if it bombs, it's still interesting, right? It's like, right. even if I'm like, even if the fucking jokes aren't hitting, it's like, well, at least you're interested in the story. You know what I mean? It's like when Freddie, I see you do jokes, it's like, man, you do a joke and that joke stinks. It's like, here I am. You know what I mean? That's so much scarier to me. What do you think? Oh, yeah. No, it is awkward with that. I think we need to normalize, and my friend Colin came up with this, the comics can wear QB like wristbands with the list of all your jokes. Wait, what? Because you said it's hard to remember your joke. Oh, a QB. Like a quarterback, like wristband. Yeah, with all the jokes. Yeah, that needs to become normal. Dude, I used to write my jokes oh, yeah. on set lists, on paper, and then I would tape them to the beer. And I would literally be like, and I, so that's how I would get through set lists all the time. I would just bring a beer on stage, never even drink it, and just have my set list taped to it. I don't give a fuck. Oh, Who I picture the survive? beer getting you drunk, and you're like, this is so smooth. They have no idea. And like, <laughs> it's so obvious. <laughs> I'm going to read it like this. I just pour the beer down my shirt. Random an idiot. And shit. <laughs> how do you, um, I hate to do this. I don't hate to do it, but I'm going to ask you both this because you have different styles. What, how do you approach a like, joke? Because I want, like, how do you, like, hey, that's a joke. How do you approach a joke? I find something funny. And then I try to make it longer. Wrong. No, I'm kidding. What, that's, what I just did. <laughs> that's not how you write jokes. Here's how you do it. No. Oh man. Um, I'm so proud of you, Freddie, too, man. Because I've I've known you since I want. I'm like almost day one. I met you when you first started. We had some some comedy meetings. I tried to do what I could do to. to oh yeah, you helped me a lot and stuff like that. You're the first like real comic who believed in me. Well, I wasn't a real comic then, which is nice to know the. Oh no, you were real. You were real. <laughs> you didn't have a regular job. And you already, uh, like, had great cred, at least, yeah. It's, this is the only job where, like, failing at everything else in life makes you a real, like, comedian, you know? <laughs> like, oh, you're, like, fucking up everywhere else? You're real. Yeah. <laughs> it's just dope. Well, that's how I ended up getting a day job, like, losing my day job, because it was, like, I got fired, and I was, like, you have to make comedy work now. For me, at least. I was, work. like, well, I got to figure this out. Um, and how do you approach a story? What do you, how do you do your story shit? I, uh, with stories, uh, I, uh, I basically write down during the day, in my phone, anytime I get really angry, happy, or anything like that, extreme emotion, mm -hmm. I just write all the details out. Right. And then uh, I fully do the story, and then I just tag. I write jokes through it. Let me ask you this, because this is a controversial question. But people always ask me this, and I like to just get people's viewpoints. What are your views on lying? I'm pro being, I think you have to be 100% true to the feeling. What do you mean? So, like, I'm willing to exaggerate or change something that makes the thing that I felt more real to the audience. Give me, can you give me an example? Is that weird? Sure. Uh, if you got beat up uh, by a group of three people, you sure. got jumped. Right. I'm willing to say I got jumped by a thousand people. Sure, sure. Right. I a think, thousand. Right. Like that is a lot of people. I'm just exactly. exactly. When do they get the time to even punch? <laughs> it happened to a guy in Staten Island. My dad ended up teaching him. A thousand people. I think it was a hundred, but yeah. <laughs> you know I mean? Right. It shifts. You know what I mean? Right. It turns. But uh, nah. So I think, you can like, exaggerate. Yeah, I think exaggerating is chill. Um, I think you have a certain point you're trying to get across. I I'm willing to play with that, but it's more so about that. You gotta be truthful to what you feel. Right. Yeah. That's my. I kind of feel the same way about story. I will. Um. For me, it's I will combine stories because I'm not gonna be like, hey, I had this time I got drunk, and then I this time I was sober and tell two stories. I was like, I'll combine them and be like, I don't mind combining them if they don't like ruin the thing. Right. I will never come up with a new. I will never come up with a new ending. You know what I mean? Like I used to tell this story about getting drunk with Michael Bolton. And uh, 
someone came to tag. They're like, oh, the end of that story, you should wake up in his room. And I went, well, that's just a lie. I won't <laughs> yeah. do that. I won't do that. But I will, like, um, if I woke up in, you know, Alec Baldwin's bedroom, right. I might say it was, you know, like, I might combine or whatever. But it's really just because I'm, I, how many times I do stories, you're, you're telling somebody something, and you're like, my stepdad said this? No, I'm going to say my dad said this. Yeah. I'm not going to say stepdad or whatever. Um, yeah, I do edits like that, too. Like, uh, I got pulled over by cops, and I'm talking with the cops, but I always say one cop. It's too much shit. Like, I, you know, I want you to tell, right. like, the left cop, the right cop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is too much of that. Yeah. No bullshit of that. Um, this one dude, I hate it. That's it. Boom. We done. Keep him over. Now, Freddie, you were talking about Omicron. Oh, no, sure. <laughs> Before the podcast, I was like, he said the one thing he doesn't want to talk Be about. Be careful, it's everyone. Oh, no, he just said, yeah. Because it was boring. We were being too funny before the podcast, so he was like, say something that's not funny before yeah. the pod. And I'm like, Omicron, yeah. <laughs> How did you guys meet? QED, I would say, probably. Yeah, Doing QED through Patrick on. Holbert. Yeah. yeah. Hello, comic and uh, host. You and guys podcaster. should be doing so much more together because you're so fucking different and cr- it's crazy how different you are. It works out well. I don't know if there's another world where like we would have met I was trying to think of that. Like, I have no other connection that I could find in my life. Yeah, that like I would have bumped into Freddie. Retail. If you worked in retail, yeah, that's how that works. You that, know? That's fair. <laughs> or some shit like retail. That. They wouldn't like me. They would always stick me in the back, and then the other guys in the back like would be trying to slack off, and I would like be bad at hiding it. <laughs> you worked in retail? Yeah, I worked at Express and at Staples. Oh man. What yeah, was... I'm a man of the people. Did you steal? No. What? Dude, if you work in retail, you gotta be stealing. I remember figuring out how easily I could have stolen from Express. Yeah. Because they had me put on the security tags. Yeah. So all I had to do was throw the. Yeah, if anyone works Express now, feel free to do this. You just throw the clothes out in the garbage and then you take out the garbage and you just give them to your buddy. You know, Greg just whispered that, but like, I know so many people that work retail with you that are not comedians and they all say you were a great guy. Who, so, you know people who work with me in retail? Yeah. What? Hell yeah. I know. This is your life. At least three people that know you from Apple. Really? Yeah. Who? Uh, one of them, Gail. Uh, Gail. A- yeah. A- I don't know if last name either. Love I mean. Gail. Straight up. And then she introduced me to some of her Apple folks that come to her party. Yeah. yeah. They're like, yeah, Greg's a great guy. So yeah, <laughs> apparently you were stealing iPods or some shit. And they didn't I was, even know. No one knew. I, so, well, I don't want to talk about the Apple store because I think I'm still within the. Uh, yeah. You know, what's it? The statute of limitations. The NDA, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I was. A, I'm a dirty. NDA? The retail NDA. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they make you sign all kinds. There's no one knows what Apple's made you sign because they make it like 63 pages. So yeah. There could be anything in there. Yeah, I remember. When I I don't know. So you used to check people in with iPads and i and iPod touches. You check them in. Yeah. And then uh, this is when the iPad first came out, and I used to wear these cargo shorts, and they're putting it in my my cargo short, and I went to lunch, and I just walked out, and I'm sitting here like, man, I just walked out of the store with an iPad. What if I didn't realize that, and now it's home, and then I just erase it, <laughs> and then have it? So I'm not saying I did that, but that's what I would have done. This is my O.J. Simpson book, How I Would Have Killed Them. <laughs> hey, I didn't steal from Apple, but this is how I would have. Yeah. But Apple, also Apple, I didn't, like, they didn't, like, they were, I don't think they cared. Like, they were so rich and powerful that you went, I don't feel anything stealing from you, because I don't think you, it doesn't hurt you enough. You right. know what I mean? Where Sears, they'd fuck you over. I would, oh man, never moving right along. You should be stealing. From no, I understand. Shoes. I've read four books by an anarchist in the last month, so now I'm pro stealing. What is this? You were saying this. What is this? This guy, David Graeber, he was an Occupy Wall Street guy. What does that mean? He wrote a book on the history of debt. Mm-hmm. Basically, all money and debt is somewhat related to like people subjugating other people. Yeah, that's the new slavery dog. Yeah, yeah, basically, it's just lower grade slavery. Well, that's the thing. When you talk about slavery, this is the thing that gets me crazy. And this might be controversial or shitty, but like we talk about slavery and we go, well, that's not slavery. Slavery was what it was back then. You go, no, 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 no. That was slavery, but slavery got better. We've evolved slavery. That slavery couldn't have last, lasted because people will uprise. So we've gotten better at slavery and we've turned it into what we have now where the slaves don't even realize they're slaves. We evolved slavery. And what we have now, credit card debt, all that shit, it's the new slavery. It's the better version. It's the This is the iPhone fucking 3GS of slavery. But of course you don't have the, the original slavery of slaves, of course, were way worse, but so was the first iPhone. You know what I mean? They didn't figure out the kinks, but now we figured it out. And now you look at what we're doing and it's like, it's, it's wild. You work, most of your life you work for someone else or for, you know, it's to get money. It's bullshit. You should not spend more than half of your day doing a thing that you don't enjoy. Heaven doesn't exist. Sorry. Heaven doesn't exist. Agreed. Okay. Jesus. So stop 
fucking because people believe in heaven because you go, ah, well, this sucks, but later I'll be in heaven. Right. Even if heaven exists, don't believe in it because it gives you an excuse to not to be a fucking slave now. <laughs> I, I both swear to God. don't think it exists, but a hundred percent think if it does exist, I'm getting in. So, you, so I'm perfect. <laughs> okay. I believe in you. Yeah. So Thank heaven you. is the reason that you work a nine to five. So I guess what I'm saying is your work a lot of people who are uh, you work and you go, man, this life sucks, but I know that eventually I'll go to heaven and that'll be the reward. So they're dangling this reward that you will never get. Right. So heaven is this reason to look at your life now and go, well, this sucks, but I'll, I'll be okay later. As opposed to saying, don't think of that. Don't don't look at heaven as a reward. Now you will make the best of your life now, right? And you won't live these miserable jobs as miserable shit to try to get that reward. You'll you'll live better now. I think that religion is dangled in front of people's faces to keep them uh, to keep them fucking down, or uh, ju- I can't think of the right word. Justify? No, docile. I guess you know what I mean. I do think that like what you just said is a really good religion. What? Like Another. I would follow that doctrine. <laughs> that would be awesome. You would get followers. Well, that's the thing. I mean, like my whole problem. Yeah, I do have followers. I have a, I'm a visionary. Uh, it's a cult I started. Uh, maybe we'll put that in there. I believe it's the king bear. There's a king bear who came down from the mountain and he gives you. He hate. Uh, never mind. Moving right along. Uh, but I even want to say to religious people, I'm like, don't. Even if you believe it, the fact that you believe it's real, right takes away from what you're doing, right? If you read the Bible, if you read these books and you take them and you go, um, this is a good way to live, if you're doing it because you're trying to get into heaven or you're scared of hell, it takes away the very good. Like, who is the good man? The man who does something for a reward or the man who does it knowing that he may not get a reward? If you look at your religion and you go, there might not be a reward, but I'll follow it anyway, that's the holier man, in my opinion. Right, right. And the guy who does it trying to get to heaven. Does that make sense? That's fair. Um, so I hope you're not. I'm sorry if this is uh, shitting on. No, I never no. know where people are religious wise. I've had a few people walk out of my comedy. I've just converted, like right now. <laughs> so we're good. I appreciate you, and Freddie. You're a wild atheist. Oh yeah, I'm an a- been an atheist since 19. Yeah, it just seems like BS. Yeah, but you're still a Jew. Well, I'm ethnically Jewish. Ethnically, I'm Jewish. an Ashkenazi Jew. I never knew what that word meant, and I always just pretended it I means did. Jews from Eastern Europe. They're Sephardic Jews. They're from like Spain or the Middle East. They're like better looking. Ashkenazi sounds like yeah. uh, it's like Seinfeld Jews. Yeah, I thought it was like the kids' clothing store. Like Ashkenazi. <laughs> it does contain the word Nazi in it, which is really weird. I'm still processing that. I only realized how it was spelled a couple of years ago. <laughs> do you have, are you an angry? Do you get angry at religion? How do you feel about religion? I think it's basically a scam. Yeah. I mean, I don't. I try not to get angry. Yeah, approaching things from anger is no. You're also uh, the odds of me being able to get rid of it are zero. So, of you personally, it'd be more likely that there's a god than that me personally could end religion, which is believed in by like <laughs> what three to eight billion people right now or something. Yeah, I mean that's what I, I got mad, and I'll guy. Okay, I apologize if I'm talking too much. Just cut it. Oh, we would it. Um, the audience wants. I this is why I get mad at people who get mad at QAnon and they get mad at anti-vaxxers, and I go. Doesn't bother me. I've been an atheist my whole life. Okay, what do you think? We, QAnon, uh, it's it's easier for me to accept that the Democrats are drinking blood right. of babies than a snake tricked a woman into eating an apple. Okay, so if we're gonna accept the fact that there's all these fucking <laughs> religious people believing all of this wild shit, it's like, yeah, you got some crazy people. Everyone in this country believes crazy shit. Now I'm not saying what they believe is good or it's helpful, but I'm not surprised. I'm not sitting here like. Yeah, there's a guy who believes in Xenu. It's a fucking, it's a wild shit. We just let people believe and you don't question it. But then QAnon comes around, they're like, ah, they're crazy. It's like, motherfucker, you believe a woman ate an apple of knowledge, which makes no sense. But you're doing a two wrongs make a right argument. You're being like, well, this other thing is really bad, so what you're doing is slightly less bad, so it's not bad. Every They're all bad. I, I'm not saying yes. I, I'm not, I'm more saying I'm not shocked. Oh, okay. I'm not yeah. saying it's okay to believe in QAnon. I'm just saying you shouldn't judge them because you're just as crazy. And I don't think religions are bad. I think uh, churches or institutions are bad. I think religions are fine. Like if whatever belief system you are following, Mm -hmm. if that's the rule book you need to follow to be a good person, go for it. I think most religions, if you just look at the rules in general, are aligned of be a good dude, good chick. That's what they're trying to get you to do. There's some extremists that take us some other place. But it's the people that create institutions within that that I have issues with. Sure. You know, like the rule books, chill. Like, all right, you know, don't, you know, uh, cheat on your girl. Don't steal shit. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Don't kill nobody. Seems cool with me. 
like I'm I'm cool with the general rule book and interpreting that in your way that you know helps you become a good dude. Mm -hmm. I'm with that. So, but I argue, I would argue this point. And this is why I'm an angry atheist. Uh, I'm not angry, but I would argue that to your point, which I I think is good as long as. But the reality of that is. That only holds if you don't really pay attention to, like, if you don't really read the book. If you're kind of like a Catholic like I was, where like, I went to church, I don't really pay attention, I'm not really reading the book, but people are telling me stories, eh, story seems great, that all works. But once you really get into what the people who are extremists right. are mostly people who just read the book and took <laughs> it literally. Like, they're just right. people who were like, oh, no, I'm doing exactly what it says. Nah, you know what I mean? You got a cat in the hat, that shit. Like, it's just <laughs> lessons. Uh, yeah, you got a I cat in the hat in it. That's it. I'm I into mean, the that. Jewish, what, the Jews are commanded to do 613 things, and I won't tell you the other 612, but one of them is to commit genocide against the Amalekites. Who's an Amalekite? Uh, there are bad guys. There are Sith. Oh, yeah? It's that's, unclear if they still right. exist, but, yeah, they're the Jews' version of Sith. The thing about Amalekites is they always come in two. That's a Star Wars joke for probably nobody. Yeah. Else At one point they kill all. Oh no, I got it. Yeah. Oh, At one boy. point they kill all the Malachites, but one guy, and then he like escapes and impregnates someone. Yeah. So at one point there was only one. Like, is that what's happening now? Like, are you the Jew and we're the Amalekites? No, I'm not going to kill you guys. Yeah. Okay. Dude, you you read the Bible in the Ten Commandments. Uh, like three of them are like loved God more than anything. Don't n- slavery's not on there. Slavery didn't make the top ten. Which is crazy. <laughs> Slavery didn't make the, the top. Guy who 10. founded Judaism had slaves. Yeah, well, I don't know that. Who founded Judaism? Uh, Abraham. Abraham. He has kids. Ishmael is his kid with his slave uh, Hagar, I believe is her name. Nice. I love you, Bat. What I love about Freddie, you always got knowledge. Like I don't have to Google that shit. I just ask you. Fifteenth yeah. president. Fifteenth president was uh, <laughs> was our, our first non openly but first gay president Buchanan James Buchanan. Whoa, Whoa. <laughs> Lincoln was sixteen, so that's my reference point. Thirty second president. 30, I believe that's FDR. <laughs> or maybe that's nineteen thirty. I'll have to I'll have to count. Yeah, that's a bit harder because that's a bunch from Lincoln. I don't know the numbers perfectly. But you can probably you can name the presidents. I feel like yeah, yeah, I can name them. Yeah, that's wild to me. Yeah, I can't even multiply. Obama's forty five. I can't <laughs> ask me any multiplication. <laughs> Many. Oh, seven times three. No idea. My dad couldn't get it today. Yeah. <laughs> we were doing 13 times seven. He thought it was 93. It's 90. FDR. Who'd you say? Oh, it was FDR. Okay. That, was, that was somewhat luck in that. What was Obama? 48? 44. Uh, four, because Trump is 45. The, the new we ones are easier. 40, yeah. yeah, because there's Bush 43, Bush 41. You just said the new ones are easier. I literally just said Obama was 48. <laughs> it's close, though. You were pretty close. You were within a couple. 48's The Rock, I think. Uh, That'd be dope. The Rock is a president? I do not support yeah. The Rock. I'm pro-Rock. Yeah. He's a centrist. Uh. What? Do you want to just, I mean, rich people have enough power already. What, wait, this is what gets me about a centrist. I don't get what a centrist really is, because I know what it used to be, but now I look, at my, I look at myself as a guy who's in the middle because I'll pick some Republican rules and some Democrat rules. Like, some things I'm like, yeah, okay, like, we should support the police. And all this shit's all social now anyway. None of it's real law oh, wait, anymore. Wait, so you don't support money and debt, but you support the police? Who were created to keep the system of money in debt? I support the police, as in the people who will come to you if someone's trying to kill you. Yeah, we could have that, but yeah. that's not most of what they do. Why well, should it be illegal if you are on the street freezing to death? Uh-huh. Why should it be illegal for you to break into someone's second home? Why should it? Why should the police protect someone's second home and let someone else freeze to death? I uh, paid for it. Yeah, I mean, like... It's all the the economic system. It's just because of the economic the system. The problem is... It, at a human level, it makes no sense. The problem isn't that that guy has a second house. The problem is that no one gave... That we allow people to be yeah. poor. And that doesn't have anything to do with the police. But I'd love to keep doing this. Let's really get into this. People can't... The, the capitalism has never worked without someone on the bottom. But you without can be at the bottom slavery. without being homeless. Well, the rule... What, what should happen... What would you say? I think you could still have a bottom without having right. homeless. The idea is to raise all ships yeah. so that our bottom now is a thousand times better than most bottoms in, I'm going to say Africa because that just seems racist and weird and shitty, but like, you know, <laughs> third world countries, I just said, yeah. I was just going to go with Africa for no reason, but you know what I mean? Like, I well, think Africa the, was the victim of colonialism. The rule is to get our bottom to be higher. Yeah. America was great before Columbus. They had these great societies. They were egalitarian. Everything was going really great, and then Columbus mm. came in with capitalism and made things a lot worse. Did Columbus bring in capitalism? Yes. I mean, uh, him and other people, yeah. But here's the thing that gets me about when people come at, like, Columbus and shit, right? There was, There is no world where everyone leaves everyone alone. 
right? The people who came from Europe, they had better technology and... Uh, uh, I literally read the Howard Zinn book, yeah. People's of the United States about Columbus today. Really? And good, because I have no information. So <laughs> I'm about to just throw some wild shit that could probably get slotted so down earlier. Columbus was sailing, and all those explorers, they were sailing. They were ready in debt to, to kings, mm -hmm. and they had to come to the New World for, to finance the debt. They had to get gold or slaves. Okay. Also, yeah, America is named after a guy who sailed to islands and captured slaves, America Vespucci. That's okay. what we're named after, like, the worst kind of slave person. And here's the thing, too, and maybe this sounds shitty, okay. but, like, that were... Th <sighs> slavery... I'm not saying slavery is okay. It's not. But back then, those were how... Those were the rules, right? Sla they didn't... I don't... We were looking back at this technology. It's like, yeah, they were bad people, but I don't know that they knew how unbelievably shitty they were. You know what I mean? Like, we look at an old iPhone, you're like, well, your Google Maps doesn't work. It's like, well, that was the first... We've evolved. M morality has evolved. So we look at old morality like it should stand to today's society. But in the future, they're going to look back at us and go, they ate animals. Yeah. That is insane that we eat animals. That's fucked up, the shit we do. I have an iPhone that's made from people in fucking China. Like, our morality still isn't perfect. You know what I mean? So looking back, I'm not saying I'm not judging them, but like I don't I mean, yeah, they shouldn't have had slaves, but I don't know that they knew what we knew today, morality wise. Or maybe I'm wrong about that. We're just looking at the last like five hundred years a lot. Mm -hmm. Humanity's much older than that. So right. there were a lot of egalitarian societies in our past. Oh, that did better. What's and he mean? goes into it in these books. What does it mean egalitarian? I hate when I have people say more uh <laughs> oh sorry, egalitarian <laughs> means like that's the goal, like equality. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Like, okay, maybe Gaster has a few extra pretty rocks than me, but right. he doesn't have three houses and I have none. Right, right. That's too much. Right. So you're saying we took steps back. Yeah, we've gone, yeah, there's been backs and forth. I mean, humanity's tens of thousands of years old. Right? Yeah, like, I've always felt like everybody should be able to live, like, I don't care if I have more houses than you in Brooklyn, but, like, everybody should be able to have an apartment in Yonkers. You know, like that's, that's your, how you're, I view it. That's yeah. what you're running on, yeah. Yonkers like, apartments. If you if you starving, Yonkers you got an apartment, <laughs> my G. And, yeah. And if you come up on more, great. If the times get rough, you still got Yonkers. You still got Yonkers. You good? Yeah. It's pretty good. Yeah. It's not great. It's close to the five boroughs. Yeah. You could come to work, mm -hmm. go back. Like you just build houses for the homeless people who live on the subways. Right. Don't, yeah. We're just spe that's an infrastructure. Right. Don't spend all this money on going on cop more cops on the subways. Which is what Eric Adams' plan is, right? But you do need something in the. You need something till we get there, because they're not gonna like. Yeah, okay. Homeless shelters are great. Oh, it's housing. But, shelters are not that useful because you right, go right, to the housing. shelter, you sleep there for a night, and then you don't get to come back to the same room. Right. It's like real housing. Right. That's what I mean. Housing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But until then, you need to keep other people safe. Um. You know, until we can get there. You know what I mean? I would go like just general numbers like one third of current cops and then the other two thirds I would split something between like social workers and like some other like thing. Sure. Also, I mean, you need cops need to definitely be more better trained. Look, my stepdad was a cop and the man was burned. The man, I think they do too much. You know what I mean? Like, but oh, yeah, also it's not easy. if you work in an ice cream shop, you think everyone likes ice cream. All right. If you're a cop and all you see is the worst of everyone all day, you start to believe that people are bad, and that shit burns your fucking soul. You know what I mean? I used to do like a joke about it. I'm like, they should just have one week on, one week with puppies. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> they should just have like some of these. Their, their souls are. Look, first of all, you get a ton of people who are cops who are, they just took the test, or they had people looking for power, and then the shitty ones make the other ones work. Kind of like how I take my mask off when no one has a mask on because I'm like. I'm like, oh, I just want to make everyone happy. Like the good cops, when you're around a bunch of bad people, the the, the bullies tend to be the ones leading or whatever. Not nah, for sure. Um, but also, aside from that, is your soul gets to get destroyed. Work in a restaurant. See how shitty people are. And that's only a restaurant. You know, I, I have empathy for police. And I do believe you can't take the police away. And we do need to fix the police. What do we, why is this the podcast? This is not what I do. Uh, I'm going to say some <laughs> shit that's probably wrong. Shit ever. I love <laughs> God. It. Um, but no, I just, I'm Friday night energy. No, you guys seem open to, diff to different changes and that's good. Yeah. 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 yeah I don't, it's, I'm not saying, yeah, we'd have to figure out the best changes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you even do politics on stage? No, but it's not funny. <laughs> I tweet a lot. If you like my politics, if, I tweet about politics a lot. You used right. to end your, your like online shows, though, with counting the presidents. 
Oh, yeah, yeah. No, that, well, that's not politics, so that's history. You should end your podcast with new rules. New rules are for AG. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, God, he's gotten so, yeah. I used to love him, yeah. You don't love him anymore? You don't like Bill Maher? I mean, he seems, yeah. Oh, he seems like a shitty person, but I like that he just kind of, like, gives it to liberals. Because I'm a liberal, and I li- I don't think we keep each other in check enough. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? you got to go leftist. Yeah, the liberals are quite annoying. Yeah. What? What did you say there? What's the difference between liberals and leftists? Super so, far uh, left? Yeah, basically Kamala Harris is a liberal, mm-hmm. so she's not that left. She doesn't. Let's say she doesn't really care about reforming the plate. Oh, all right, we're back. <laughs> we had a little bit of technical difficulty. Um, yeah, well, yeah. Uh, Freddie got furious at what I said, and he smashed the microphones. We had to rebuild the studio. This is two weeks later. Um, that didn't happen, Freddie. Your face looks like I'm, I'm not serious. I'm just kidding. Oh, I was just thinking. It. I was just thinking of a funny. Line. Yeah, <laughs> it was getting too political. You know what I mean? Yeah, Shut yeah. us down. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the man heard it. Follow it together. Well, we're back now. Uh, what were we even talking about? We could pivot. Or we could, oh, we're pivot. Well, I just want to say, don't buy NFTs. If you live in New York State, the sports gambling has become too easy. That's and, how you make money, yeah. I'm what? pro both. You're pro yeah. NFT or you're pro? Oh, my God. Okay, then we'll start about that. No, I don't know. What? There, it's a, Was Beanie Baby smart in 1999? It's all just like, a, everything's all just like a Pimber and Ponzi scheme type thing. But um, like, I could see value in NFTs. Because there's ways of doing them that aren't all, like, hustles. Like, the Nas NFT, I think, is a valid thing. Oh, like, where it's real art. Yeah, like, Nas has an NFT right now. I don't know if you, like, saw the mm-hmm. art. So he released an NFT of two different songs where if you purchase it, you are entitled to a small percentage of the streaming rights. Oh, that's so, something else. Yeah, so, like, you're actually an owner of right. the song. So I think that is a valid NFT. The other shit where like you get like a monkey picture, I think that's stupid. Right, right. You know, but like I thought that was legit. Like you get a, there's a different cover from uh, the general album art that you get that you can display. It's like buying stocks. Exactly. You're buying stock in a song. Yeah, that's kind of cool. It. Yeah. So for the life of the song, it streams. You get a percentage of it, um, and then for an artist, um, like you're both invested now together. Like you have actual fans now that fuck with you that like. They're, they have a reason to promote you because they're mm-hmm. literally going to make more money, um, however little it is. But, you know, like, I just think that's dope that. How can I do that to this podcast? So, uh, yo. Let me sell parts of an episode. And if your episode does well because you promoted it, you get a piece. I would be willing to bet that you can do an NFT of the podcast where, like, they get a percentage of, like, the ad money. Or right. like the Patreon or some shit like it that. It just seems like so much. I just want to own part of your mustache. <laughs> oh, it's easy. I shave it every week. You get a new one. You know what throws me off about this podcast? Hit me. So, like, knowing you as a dude, mm-hmm. you're a good dude, mm-hmm. right? I fuck with you. But, like, you give me, like, regular dude energy mm-hmm. when I see you. Mm-hmm. When I listen to you, you give me, like, really responsible corporate boss energy. What? Yeah. Like, Wait. the audio of you, Yeah, you sound super, like, respectable. I wear ties and shit. Right now? All the time. So, like, I'm seeing you, so it's not happening. Uh-huh. But, like, when I listen to the podcast, I have a disconnect. Like, that's not the Greg I know. I think I'm very much myself on this podcast I, that I am off stage. I agree, but I, I just thought. think, like, seeing you uh-huh. and listening to you. Oh, my voice sounds yeah. different than my look. Yeah. Yeah, I think I have a, I think I have a voice that sounds like a... Like a boss or a radio guy. He did make us do a lot of online training before the podcast to get ready for compliance. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, I'm very big into OSHA on this podcast. As Mac had a learning (laughs) test. Um, Yeah, well, well, I don't know. What does that mean? I don't know. I don't know how to take that as an insult, or am I sad now? How? Do, what's my emotion? I should be. It's not a re- diss. It's just uh, I'm bringing it to your, you know, like general awareness. You know, <laughs> start it out there. If everything was Zoom, you could like not show yourself, and yeah. you could be a CEO. You Word. could make a lot of money. And if purely in the metaverse, you will be really. I do rich. take myself down an octave when I'm on the podcast. I just go down one octave, like a. Uh, Nicole, what that lady's name is? I can't think of I'm not good at names. Uh, the <laughs> lady who made that drug. I'm moving right along. Uh, I'll tell you this. Yesterday, <laughs> Gary Goldman. I love Gary Goldman. But I get off stage and he looks at me and he goes, uh, oof. And he goes, ah, I'm kidding. But I'm like, <laughs> yeah, man, you're Gary Goldman. You can't do that to me. We're not on the same level. Like, if you say that to me, he's going to break my fucking heart. You know what I mean? Like, sometimes it's like, we can't joke like that. You, Me and my friends could joke like that because... You know, uh, I'm not looking up to them, and I know, like, I think he, like he's like him and I are like friends. I love Gary, yeah. he's a sweet guy, and he thinks I'm funny. I think he thinks I'm funny. I don't know. He, all he ever said was "oof," but uh, <laughs> I walked off with that. You know, when comics do that sometimes, you're like, "Yeah, man, we can't do those jokes. I'm too sensitive for that shit." <laughs> I'm very sensitive as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your best friend did that to me unintentionally. Once. Anthony, yeah. What do you do? Tell me. I love the, the very. Shit of this guy. 
uh, the day I dropped my album, mm -hmm. right, it was like the scariest day ever because I had a show that day and I was like, I right, I got I gotta try new shit. Yeah. So I had the worst set I've had like ever. Right. Because it was the first time I'm trying everything new since the day I was a rookie and had the but now I have the awareness that I's that it's bad. Right, right, right. Right. So I say what's up to Anthony before <laughs> I can't wait and he gives me like the yo, was good, congrats. You know, so I'm feeling good. I go up there, I eat it, and afterward he goes like like he gives me this look like, yo, you know, and it, it was just like a like a shoulder like shrug of like that I, ain't it. You I know? guarantee because I know Anthony, that look was this crowd that was good, that crowd sucks. Because yeah. Anthony would never and I just know him. He's so sensitive to that shit. He also knows what's good. So he probably watched and went, that's good. He's like, what's up? He probably, this is probably what he's like. He probably was like, what's up with them? He would never go, what's up with you? He's oh. incapable. His mind doesn't even work that way. His mind works in a way of like, he'll always hurt you, but always on accident. And never, but like, because he's incapable of even like thinking you are not good. Well, that's the thing. I didn't take it as like him wanting to put me down. Mm -hmm. I felt bad because I looked up to him. You know what I mean? Yeah, I yeah, still yeah. do. Right, right. But like in the moment, it, it hurt, and then I went home and I was like, "Okay, it's just the dude telling me do better next week." No, that's not him. He he. I mean, I can guarantee you what he did was, "Yo, this crowd sucks." Okay, that's what that was because I and you have to understand the weird relationship I have with him. I know his brain. <laughs> I I mean, like I know his brain. I can guarantee that he. I've never seen in the fucking thirty years I've ever I've seen even people he hates hates. He wouldn't do that too. He's sweet. I call. I call. I've called both of y'all for advice. So I appreciate the dude. But yeah. like, that's how I took. I was like, oh shit, Anthony told me I got to step my game up. So I went home. I was like, I gotta go <laughs> right. Never. I'm his best friend. He literally looks at me and goes, "You're not raising your child right." But he would never do. <laughs> he would never do that to me. Like if I bombed, he would never go. G like that's not even his style of joking. That's not his style of personality. Like I love that. It's always funny. Like you never know who you hurt out there by accident. Yeah. Um, I, I appreciate. You gotta go it. find those jokes now, sir. No, I like in retro, like literally, like like it took like a day or two, but like I was appreciative of it because it was like, like I, and mind you, it might have just been me like self soothing, but I was like, I, right, I guess that means he thinks I could do better, no. so I gotta do better. So I was like, let me just you know get no. back to writing. He's so also, he also is so unconfrontational that that's that he would never. He would. It's like that was. I know for a fact, without even asking him, and we can call him. But I know for a fact when he did that face, he went, "This fucking crowd." It's like this fucking crowd, or these fucking people, or this. It was definitely not you. He's incapable. I would also say almost too cowardly. I would say maybe too cowardly to even do that. I can wait. He's a very you. sweet guy. I wrote bars yeah. after that shit. I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready to fire you, but no, he, he can't do that shit. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I mean, I'm sure that's the same thing that happened with Gary. I'm sure Gary was like. Because the set wasn't bad, but he was like, oof. But I also was doing this religious shit that I was like, I was like, but also Gary's not Catholic. He's Jewish. So like he wouldn't even have been insulted by that shit. Cause I just went on a whole rant about Jesus. And uh it got medium laughs, but yeah, no, I guarantee it. What was the story? I don't even remember. It was like like I said, it was literally just me trying shit because I you know I had it in my head. I was like, all right, this is out. The material's burned. I gotta mm -hmm. try new shit. It was a small stake show, like 30 people, so it wasn't like it mattered. <laughs> this idea of me like, you could do better, but is yo. so out of his <laughs> abilities as a human. But you, were, I appreciated it. Like I was like, okay, I got stuff. You game. shouldn't, because it's not, it's a, it's, that's a <laughs> shitty thing to do to yeah, somebody. Yeah. You can do better? <laughs> could you imagine saying that to someone? I, I think there's certain people. That's that a like, psychopath would do that. But then how do you, how do you get feedback from people you rock with? You don't say you can do better. <laughs> First, he, he did it. He like. He emoted it. No, that's a that's like, unless you were up there going, all white people are the worst, and I'm a and I love hating Jews. Dang. He would go, you could do better, like yeah. real hate shit. <laughs> he could maybe, but I don't even think he's capable of that. Okay. I don't. He's too sweet and like, yeah, no, that's not his style. Because also, sorry to whatever, but if I saw you do a story that bombed, yeah, I would go, ah. Worst case scenario, I'll go, ah, there's something there. I go, I love that story. Um, you think about this, this, and this angle. I never, and I think Anthony said, I never take away without giving. So if you're going to give someone notes, I, I give you, no, I'll give you notes, but I won't ever discuss that it didn't go well because the crowd, to most comics who've been doing this long enough, the crowd means nothing. 
I do right, not right. give a shit about the crowd. I give a shit about the content. And if the content's not there, it's just, we all know it's just not there yet, you know, or it's or tacky. And I don't think you're. I don't. I think you're incapable of doing hacky stuff. And if you were doing hacky stuff, Anthony wouldn't have been there when you got off stage. Right, right. He wouldn't have looked at you. It was like no. It's like there's not a world. In the Spider Verse, there's one Anthony DeVito <laughs> in the thousands of universes who would do that. My man, yo, yeah, I, I fuck with how you stand by your man, yo. That's just dope, B. But it's also I just know him, like I know how his brain works. You know, and, I thought a beef was gonna get started. Yeah, yeah B. No. Yeah, now I was ready to. I didn't know what side to join. Yeah, but I was ready to be recruited. <laughs> no, like Team Anthony, or Team Greg, out here. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But what Anthony would do is you go, hey, don't tell anyone my wife's pregnant. And then he immediately says it on a podcast. <laughs> Those are his flaws. He has ruined every single surprise in my life. Okay. He has just told people. He said, I was like, hey, this is what we're going to name my kid. Don't tell anyone. Immediately tells people. This doesn't realize. <laughs> just doesn't realize he's doing that. Uh, okay. Gave away the surprise for my 40th surprise birthday party. Just told me to my face. like It was like, ah. And then my wife's fucking marriage. thing. He did that. And then last week, we did the night cream show. Mm-hmm. There's another move that Anthony did. That's like a fun move. We're sitting at the, uh, we're doing the night cream show. Uh, middle of the show, L Orlando, who's on this podcast a lot, comes up and goes, you should bring Amanda Gale on stage. And I'm like, I'm in the middle of a set, right? We're doing a set. She tells us to do this. And I'm like, so then we said, okay, we took a break and had Amanda come up to do stand up. And then we came back and did more night cream. And Anthony was like, yeah, I thought it would be hilarious if she did that. And I'm like, you... Almost, you don't almost ruined the goddamn show. Also, he came on my podcast. No food allowed here. Came with pizza. One of my favorite episodes. <laughs> Just, he loves to. He will do that because he lives in another world. Okay, but he'll never go. You need to be better. <laughs> That's like <laughs> he's like almost too stupid for that. I t- I took that like some you know like it, it felt like Kobe Mamba mentality shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> no. That's what I thought Anthony was giving me. He's like, yo, hey, B. He, you know I, mean? I mean, I'm glad you said that because, and I hope that you believe what I'm saying. I. I would tell you that that's what he was doing, but I've never seen him even get close to doing anything like that in the history of knowing him for almost 30 years. Okay. He's much more of a Magic Johnson. <laughs> you know I don't know sports. <laughs> Which Mandalorian are you talking about? You need to explain. No, what do you mean? Why is he Magic? Explain Because he's really nice to everybody. Magic was a nice guy? Yeah, Ma- Yeah, of course. I didn't know that. Yeah, still is. Why would you have the nick? Yeah, Magic, yeah, still around. Yeah. <laughs> I thought he was dead. Yeah. <laughs> Moving right along. I mean, yeah. I mean, if you'd bat, yeah. Who's going to live longer, Magic or Kobe? You could have made a lot of money. That's really sad. Okay. Yeah. Might have to edit that out. Yeah. yeah that Kobe shit was fucked up. I can't believe they shot him. Are you uh, making, you, you mentioned sports betting already. Are you betting right now? Yeah. Okay. They're gonna? giving away free bets. I made like $1,200 last month. Really? Yeah. I paid my bills with it. Yeah. I'm, yeah. Oh, this is a good road for you to go down, Freddie. Yeah, yeah. This is the beginning of the end for Freddie G. <laughs> oh, please. Sports yeah. betting is going to ruin a lot of people in New York. You just take out more than you put in. Hmm? You put mo- you put a little money in, then you get a bunch of free money. Oh, right, You right, bet right. it, and then you just take out what you put in. Yeah, that's fair. They've made it easy for like a month or two. Then you got to quit. After the Super Bowl, I'm quitting. Yeah, this is, like, this is like when they used to hand out free cigarettes. They're like, well, I'm just smoking the free ones. Next thing you know it, <laughs> you need that fix, Freddie. And next thing you're betting on like old women walking down the block, like, who's going to be faster? <laughs> I could rig that, though, yeah. Yeah, you could win. Oh, yeah. You're going to win. The gambling system is set up for, the, for people like you to win. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm rooting for you, brother. Oh, thank you. Me I too. I used to rig basketball games at the courts. So oh, really? How, yeah. We used to like uh, have people like meet and pretend they didn't know each other, so that when we could pick teams, like the team we like picked was like disgustingly good, and then we would just bet money. This <laughs> is like that's white really smart, yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just bring like all my boys, just hustling and, like, people, people, hustle people. We did that like all through high school. I used to do the same thing with the opposite. I used to come super dressed up and looking like I knew how to play basketball. People would pick me, <laughs> throw the ball right over the goddamn back of the hoop. <laughs> people would lose money betting on me. I was like, I wouldn't wear my glasses, double vision. Who cares? Um, yeah, man, Freddie, don't get into sports betting. Oh, it's so fun. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. Yeah, they should legalize prostitution before gambling. It should, uh, yeah, it should legalize everything. It's wild that you can't really. What do you mean, everything? Murder? I mean, there's way too many laws. Mm. What do you mean? Why? What, 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 I love getting into this weird shit that you think, Freddie. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> Tell me, what do you mean? No, like murder is the, yeah, the only. What murder laws should go. Oh, and yeah. the dr- illegal drugs. Yeah. Sure, okay. Yeah, yeah. That's what I really meant. Yeah. Drugs, okay. okay. Other than drugs, what else? Three laws that could go right now. Okay. The top. Fred- Parking the president. fines way low. If they exist, way lower. Parking no, fines? Yeah, no speeding. Speeding tickets are gone. Immediately. Yeah. 
A drinking age, 16 with parents' permission. All right. Let's hear why none of that can happen. Speeding. Have you ever been on the highway? Have you ever been on the BQE? These motherfuckers drive like maniacs, and they're not putting just their own lives in danger. You're putting other people's lives in danger. Are the speeding laws stopping that? No. What they do is the road's empty, and then they trap you and take your money. They, the speeding laws are not stopping. You're, you're talking about a world with the speeding laws. Right. And the speed, So the speeding laws are not effective, and you're saying why they're not effective, and then you're saying they need to still exist. No, I'm saying, this, I'm saying getting pulled over keeps the everyday maniac from driving like a maniac. But it might not keep the kid. Also, it's like, hey, I can go like 80 miles an hour. Yeah, I think that I think that people are I keep keep to the speed limit as in fear of speeding tickets. You don't think so? Around cops a little bit. They just it should be dangerous driving. It should not be based on a pure speed. And 55, 65, that's way too low. You, the fact that the baseline is like, well, I I'm, I'm I don't drive that fast. I drive five or ten over the speed limit. That's like the baseline. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, but it's like, oh, I drive 65 into 55. That's like a normal, that's like a slow driver. Sure, I'm fine with that. But yeah. these guys who drive, like, they swerve in and out or they're doing 100 miles I do an hour agree past that you. illegal. If you get enough speeding tickets, they'll take their license. And I'm like, they shouldn't be driving. A lot of those people shouldn't be driving. We should only be giving them tickets and get rid of the speed limits. Because the speed limits, what they do is like, oh, I got one for going 65 into 40 or something. Sure. Yeah. The speeding, uh, this it's just a source of revenue. Well, I would argue, I don't think that none, any of that money, I don't think any of that money should ever go to the state. There shouldn't be a reward system from penalization of the people, right? Like they do these parking, like the amount, when you, we found out how much money the state lost because of the parking when COVID happened and like they weren't doing parking tickets. It was like, you should not be hoping, you should not be <laughs> penalizing people for tracking as a income flow. You know what I mean? There's two things I think should happen. One, if you get a parking ticket, you should be allowed to do something other than pay it. To rectify it, like customer, like you know, like uh, some kind of service or something, because some people just don't have money, and like a parking ticket to a rich guy is different to a parking ticket to a guy who's got forty five bucks left in the bank. Right. Oh, um, so I would, I would say, and all of the money you get from parking, uh, illegal parking, if they need to have it, should go to charity. We when should go to charity. Just, like I said in the book, I read about that. Uh, this David Graeber guy. State started as a way to make permanent stuff that was stolen from the people. Hmm? I'd go the say that I can expand. Well, go ahead, yeah. Gaster. No, sorry. No, go ahead, go ahead. I, so I, it's the strong men became the kings. They had the most resources, and then you put the state in to kind of keep everything the same. You got man. I'm not smart enough. You got to explain that further. More than one sentence. You one liner. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, how do you become king? <laughs> how do you become king? Well, first, first of all, uh, at the beginning, everyone's equal, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden, there's a king. Well, who's? How did the king get all the resources? Well, he took them from somebody by right. private means. And then he forms the state to keep it permanent. I see. I thought you meant state like boundaries, like different states. Oh, then, well, yeah, he gets to into the permanent. definition of a state. To keep that. his yeah. power. Yeah, well, the state power. is the, has the monopoly on the use of force. You should be Ron Rogan, I feel like. You'd be a good Rogan. I guest. would be screaming at him. <laughs> <laughs> no, you got a lot of good information on a lot of this stuff. It's very interesting. Am I allowed to? I mean, why? Yeah, just he's a comedian, and yeah. he admits he's an idiot. Why is he talking about vaccines? Oh, I, I, I was. Yeah, okay. Yeah, no, so go into him. Sure. Oh, yeah, yeah. Get him, get him, Freddie. Get him, <laughs> get him. Don't, we, don't say things that are dangerous and contradict public health uh -huh. willy nilly. Okay. No, I agree. Yeah, that's just right. Okay. Yeah, at sure. any other time, that's the thing that should be getting the tickets, not me going sixty-five and a forty. That's a good idea. I like that. That's it. How about that? I think like cancel instead of canceling people, cancel tickets. That's you know, bad. you said some you you said the N word. You're not canceled, but here's a fifty dollar fine. <laughs> you know what I mean? That works, and then you can actually judge it. So I'm saying more laws. I think we got to get into speech tickets. I'm with that. I feel like there should be like when you give like a speeding ticket at the end of the year, the people that didn't get tickets should get a lottery ticket for the speeding ticket money. This is a great idea, and I back this a thousand percent. It like gives you incentive to drive. Absolutely. Yeah. I've been saying something similar for years where I think we haul people off to prison, right? But we don't haul good people to a cruise. You know what I mean? Ah. If someone does something good, hey, I'm pulling you over. Why? You got five dollars in Disney World. You know, you yeah. get five dollars at Disney World bucks because you did a good thing. We we hate we shit on people who are who do things bad, but we don't raise up the people who are doing good things. Yeah. I'm into this lottery move. I'm with this. Maybe I'll start doing my own tickets, do my own law. 
I, I wanted to do that like when I was in uh, high school. I, I like I registered it once like uh, at a website called Cars Don't Hurt, mm -hmm. where like if you did something crazy, I would give people on the street like a little red like card saying, "Hey, that was a little stupid. Don't do that again." <laughs> and it had like information on how cars hurt if you cross the street like uh -huh. green light. And then the opposite, like if I saw somebody do some fire shit. Like, that was dope. You know how, like, you waited. I would mm -hmm. give them a little green card. They was doing that with Starbucks gift cards. I bought a bunch of Starbucks gift cards for $5. Anytime I saw anyone doing a good thing, I went, hey, man, that's nice. Here's 5 bucks." I had a good guy, a guy in the crowd, great laugher. I went, you just got a latte, brother. I just started rewarding people with $5 Starbucks gift cards. And they get over-caffeinated and start doing evil. <laughs> oh, well, I'll tell you what did actually happen. I gave out about 20 Starbucks gift cards. Then someone came up to me, and they went, Greg, that was a great bit you did. And I went, what? And they went, you were you gave me a Starbucks gift card with no money on it. I went, there was money on it. And he was like, no, nah, man, I went to Starbucks and there was no money on it. And then I went, huh? Then I called CVS where I bought them. And I was like, hey, I bought these gift cards. There was no money. And they were like, did you do it at the self-checkout? And I went, yeah. And they're like, no, you have to do it at the person checkout because they have to turn them on. So I gave around 20 Starbucks gift cards to people. And they had uh, no money. They're just going to Starbucks and looking like idiots. And you spent 100 bucks. Yeah, but they ended up giving me uh, the. They gave me the hundred bucks okay. in uh, more cards. That's nice. So but... they whatever. Well, I mean, and I also think they don't do it at the self check. Freddie, how do you feel about? I live that, but I want to ask him this. Other, my caffeine. I'm too caffeinated. How do you feel about this? You, I feel like. How, what do you feel about this rule of this lottery rule? This lottery law. It seems nice. Yeah, I want to be able to have cards and yeah, give cards out on the street. Yeah, red card people and mm -hmm. all that. Yeah. What about tickets like for soccer. cancellation? T cancel tickets, like you were saying. I know you want less laws. Are you into this? I, some things I think are more important than money. <laughs> but yeah, it's a good. I like where he's coming from. His intention is good. Um, hey, Max, just so I know, do you know where we're at on time? Just because I have uh, no idea. Like 51 minutes. Okay, cool. So we'll, we'll start to wind down and then we'll do the Patreon if you guys are cool with that. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. Um, oh my God. Hang on a second. I got to tell this fucking girl. Oh, fuck. I was supposed to do a show, but because this all happened, now I'm going to be late for the show. Oh my stress! Um, <laughs> when we when we do the Patreon, I'll text her and let her know that I got. I'll tell her I have COVID or something. Uh, I just tell her I have COVID now. Uh, it's true. What? Wouldn't we all have had it at some point? I think it's just. I mean, I had it on Thanksgiving. Yeah. Did you get it yet? Yeah. Did I think you... twice at this point. Really? Yeah. Hey, and you... I'm shot up and everything. But How, were you okay? Uh, I I got sick more from the shots. I feel like I got real sick once. Mm -hmm. Got sick every time I got the shots, and then uh, the last time I didn't get that bad, but my family got bad. Oh, okay. Yeah, but we all good. We out here. We, we out here. here. Yeah. You just remind me so. Why I love you, which I didn't get in, into this, is that you remind me so much of my best friend Emil growing up. Okay. He was, he was a Dominican Puerto Rican. What is your nationality? A Dominican. Dominican. Um, I don't know why I was Dominican. I don't. Know, I guessed it while you were saying it. <laughs> I'm Dominican. He's Dominican. That's right. He's Dominican. Uh, <laughs> and so I don't know if you ever do this where you meet someone who's similar to someone else you know. So you go, well, you're just that guy for me now. Yeah. Like, oh, you're just like, I love you because I love him. You're coming in on a meal's credit. So I was always like, ah, gas was cool. And you got great fucking stories. Um, and Freddie, love you just because you're one of the weirdest motherfuckers ever. Oh, met, yeah, I'm weird. Who's also yeah. great. No, yeah, but not yeah. weird. You're not like in the best way. In comedy, you need to be different. Yes. And you have all these fun quirks that I love about you. And also, man, you've gotten just so much better as a comedian since you started. I've never seen someone Word. who, like, when you started, you just worked yourself into being fucking really, really good at this. You know what I mean? Like, Oh, thank you. You you know, when you first, you were, I've never, you know, you're such a wild man that I don't think you were running on stage. Uh, maybe, I'm not, maybe this sounds insulting. No, I, it was like, I got to get on stage a lot because I'm really awkward. And we're also right. a lot of stage fright. So I got on stage like 3,000 times. Yeah, to yeah. get like less awkward. The fact that you counted it is an insane... Move. Yeah, yeah, that helps. I was only got on stage about 50 times before I started counting. Yeah. And then once I started counting, I got on stage thousands of times. So the counting helped. Yeah, and you, I mean, you also write your ass off. And it's like, I've never seen someone just against all that God gave him work <laughs> through it. You know oh, yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah. Well, I found a, a, a guy on Reddit who's like a young comic mm -hmm. who created an Excel sheet mm -hmm. for comics where they could track their open mics, their performances, mm -hmm. and their writing and all of that. And I was hyped. I was like, oh, this is dope, like sabermetrics type shit. So I show it to Freddie, and Freddie's like, I don't see the value in this. I've already had my own. <laughs> and I, yeah. I was just like, oh, I was trying to note that. Oh, because, yeah, he's a... Uh, the thing is, the... Uh, 
his instinct was to charge comics for it, which is not a great thing. Greg's oh, kinda, right. Yeah, it was yeah. $8. It's, dollars. it's not a ripple, but yeah. <laughs> $8. The problem with the spreadsheet is, Guy, if you're out there, yeah, you have to write down your laughs per minute on the spreadsheet. The LPMs. But it doesn't count it for you. Are you going to manually listen to your tapes and count the LPMs? You should be listening to the tape anyway. I listen, but I'm not counting the LPMs. I don't believe in LPMs. Yeah, Damn. Oh, say Greg's anti the spreadsheet also. Yeah. Well, I'm anti any kind of doing anything. Have you ever used a spreadsheet, Greg? Uh, for the first time last week, my accountant made me use a spreadsheet, and it was a complete nightmare for me. My wife had to sit down next to me and give me a massage, and she's like, it's going to be okay. And I'm like, this fucking thing. I had to go through my PayPal and do all that. That was, that was the first time I've ever. You know me. I'm, I'm more of a dirty boy. That's not the right word. Um <laughs> But Freddie, I hope you're taking this as a compliment. I think you're such oh, a funny, course, yeah. funny I mean, I guy. I can't take compliments, but yeah. And you work hard. and Because uh, yeah. Gasser and I, you look, we're two smooth guys. You know, oh, God, We yeah. walk on stage, charisma. Yeah. Freddie, you walk on stage, you are a hard-working. The other person who I would put in that category, although she's different in a way, but Michelle Wolf, she is someone who just, she's always been, she's always been funny, but like, the way she works is crazy, and I see you doing the same thing. Oh, that's a good that's compar- huge, yeah. That's a great, oh. like... Yeah, yeah. It's a big high level. You're a hard-working yeah. guy. And you got that beard now. You look great. Yeah. Anyway. It would be great. Like, she did the last correspondence dinner with a comedian. It would be great to do a set, and then no comedian ever does that thing again. Oh, yeah. They ended it. Yeah, that's... They yeah. had to cut that down. Yeah, yeah. I was there. You know that? Every time I was there? Yeah, I know. It made sense. She hired you and Anthony, and then the entire thing went away. And Dude, they hired the guy who wrote the Hamilton book the next year, and now no one cares about it. <laughs> as soon as she got off stage, Anthony was like, yikes, huh? <laughs> Maybe you get him next time, Michelle. Um, all right. Let's... Hey, we're going to go into overtime on the Patreon. Uh, we're... Uh, so do me a favor. Check out these guys on uh, – check out their sets. Check out all their things. Uh, they're just great guys. They're really, really funny people. Uh, Freddie – Orange Freddie G. Orange Freddie G. Also, yeah, listen to the Patreon because I'm going to say unrated things. <laughs> this wasn't rated. <laughs> Were you giving yourself rated this whole time? I've been rated so far. <laughs> I sometimes will just say F instead of fuck mm-hmm. because uh, if you say fuck on a TikTok live, you get kicked off. So I started doing it all the time. Did you say F? F that? Yeah, F, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I've been been ban- I've had a lot of videos taken out for saying penis. We um, we had a video recently where I said penis and it got t- they took down the audio for a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> well, this is a TikTok. So it's on a the pa- term too, like what what are you supposed yeah, yeah. to use? It's right, the pro- yeah, please. Yeah, we're gonna have unrated Frey G on the podcast. Going unrated. Yeah. <laughs> also, I'm gonna try a game called uh, Story Roulette. I don't know if you guys are down with this. Where I'm, I am down. Yeah. I uh, pick a different topic and we see we got stories about it. Story Roulette. You know, maybe kind of fun. Uh, Gaster, where can they find you? Uh, I'm on all social medias with my name, Gaster Almonte. Uh, I got my podcast every week with the homie Chalet with Sharp, The War Report. Mm-hmm. And uh, obviously got the series here with the homie Freddie G. You can find him on his TikToks, IG, you know what I mean? And uh, I do the easiest part, just post it on my YouTube. Does Gang, gang. You know what I mean? Gang, gang. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I could have. You said it before, and I went, well, this is a new one for me. Uh, he always has something new to say. Yeah. Yeah. There's all kinds of new words. Yeah, and you got your we, Freddie G should be a good, but I'll just say it again: Freddie G on all platforms. Orange Freddie G. Orange Freddie G on all platforms. Also, this stuff will be on my Instagram and stuff too when uh, when the p- podcast comes out. Uh, we're gonna go into overtime. We're gonna go into the so go to the Greg Stone Zone. Um, unrated. Unrated. For, for Freddie, Freddie G. G. Unrated. He's gonna be unrated. Also, I have two dates. I do want to plug real quick. Which is uh, February the twenty third. I will be doing an hour at the Comedy Cellar. Freddie G's gonna open for me. Oh yeah, I was thinking we should plug that. Yeah, uh, nice. And then the twenty fourth, I will be in. Uh, we're doing a gig for Ryan. Br- oh, this is Ryan Brow, Stafford Springs. It's in Connecticut. Yeah, and February fourteenth, uh, Valentine's Day, I will be headlining at uh, Levity Live in Nyack. So if you're in that area, get your dick over there and. Um, and come check me out. Harumi will be there. We might do a night cream thing. I really don't know. Uh, as of now, that is it. But get your ass over to the Greg Stone Zone um, Patreon and uh, subscribe. And we can get the. We'll go into. We're gonna play this game called uh, a Story Roulette, where we're gonna see what kind of stories we got. And Freddie G will be unrated, which is very. I've never seen the pants off on Freddie G. It's amazing. I actually have. That's as well. <laughs> yeah, I did. Where I was wearing no pants in the last sketch. Nice. And t- a couple people said I had a big cock, yeah. Do you say it? No. No. Well, let them believe. There you go. Yeah. It's, big it's, doesn't matter. Yeah, keep, yeah. All that matters is the money. In your My wife's 5'1". How big does it need to be? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys so much. I love you all. We'll see you uh, real soon. Uh, good night. Big up your head. Big up your body. Get on the bus. It's time to party. It's Gregory. It is a Friday night Gregory. Fuck
Get in the car.